Caesar Augustus was the first and the greatest of the Roman emperors. From the disaster that was the murder of his uncle, Julius Caesar, he schemed, politicked, and fought to defeat his rivals and establish himself as the supreme ruler of the empire. On his deathbed, he summed up his accomplishments with the words, I found Rome a city of clay, but left it a city of marble. Augustus was born Gaius Octavius on September the 23rd, 63 BCE. He was the son of Gaius Octavius, a wealthy man who had political aspirations, but who lacked the noble heritage that was required for advancement. He had, however, married into nobility, taking as his bride Attia, the niece of Julius Caesar, Rome's future dictator. With this connection, Gaius Octavius looked destined for consulship. However, his sudden death in 58 BCE changed everything. Suddenly, Attia was a widow, and four-year-old Octavius, who is generally known as Octavian before he was given the title Augustus at age 35, was fatherless. But Attia didn't remain a widow for long. She quickly remarried a prominent political figure. However, Octavian would not grow up under this man's roof. Attia entrusted him to his grandmother Julia, the sister of Julius Caesar. Julia died in 51 BCE, at which time Octavian moved into his mother's house. By then, he had already developed a fascination with his famous uncle, expressing the desire to join Caesar in his conquest of Gaul. After defeating the Gauls, Caesar marched his army back to Italy, inflicting civil war on the nation. Meanwhile, Octavian was developing into a capable, powerful young man. He also showed himself to have an iron will. As he continued to develop his skill as a budding politician and warrior, his mother sang his praises to Caesar. In 46 BCE, the conqueror gave his 17-year-old nephew the privilege of riding in a prominent position in his great triumph or victory parade for his successes in Gaul and the Civil War. In 54 BCE, Octavian became seriously ill. He recovered, but would suffer chronic health problems for the rest of his life. As soon as he was well, the 18-year-old left Rome to join his uncle in stamping out a rebellion in Hispania. But when he arrived, the fighting was over. Still, he managed to impress Caesar with his courage and tenacity while traveling through extremely hostile territory. When they returned to Italy, Caesar made Octavian his main heir and offered him posthumous adoption as his son. On his return to Rome, Octavian continued his education in oratory, philosophy and literature in both Greek and Latin. He also developed his oratory skills, practicing giving speeches every day. Caesar next embarked upon a three-year conquest in the East. He gave Octavian the great honor of being his master of horse, meaning that the teenager was second in command. Ahead of the expedition, Caesar sent his nephew to Albania, where he established valuable contacts with legionary commanders. But Caesar's conquest of the East never materialized. On the Ides of March, 44 BCE, he was assassinated as a result of a conspiracy between 60 leading Romans, led by Marcus Brutus, Gaius Cassius Longinus, and Decimus Brutus. Up until this point in his life, Octavian's closeness to Caesar had been his greatest asset. Now suddenly, it was his greatest liability. His uncle's enemies targeted him as a problem to be eradicated. At the time that Caesar was assassinated, Octavian was still in Albania. His mother sent him a letter urging him to return to Rome. She told him that now he had to be a man and consider prudently what he had to do and do it according to fortune and opportunity. Octavian agreed and sailed back to Italy. He was devastated at the death of his uncle and mentor and grew a beard in the traditional sign of mourning. Mixed with his grief was a burning desire for revenge against the assassins of Caesar. With the death of Caesar, Octavian became the head of the family. Shortly after his return to Rome, he gave a speech in which he pointed to a statue of his uncle and proclaimed that he would take on all of the honors of his adoptive father. Yet those who had plotted against Caesar were determined to wipe out this young upstart. Chief among them was Mark Antony, a politician and general who had been a close ally of Caesar before betraying him. He considered himself to be the rightful successor. Despite the desire for revenge that was seething within him, Octavian proceeded with caution and diplomacy. 
he managed to turn the elder statesman and orator Cicero from supporting the assassins to throwing his weight behind himself as the new dictator of Rome. Octavian then traveled to the south of Italy and lobbied support from Caesar's former generals. In short order, he had massed an army of 3,000 veteran soldiers. Among them were two legions that he had pried away from Mark Antony by offering them more money. The Roman Senate now had to decide whether to give their support to Octavian or Mark Antony. They favored Octavian's youth, but they had no faith in his proclaimed loyalty to the Republic. In the end, the issue was decided on the field of battle. Octavian's army won the day and forced Mark Antony and his men to retreat across the Alps and withdraw into Gaul. There he regrouped by absorbing the armies of Gaul. Octavian knew that Antony was now too strong for him to defeat. He then made the strategic decision to throw his support behind Antony. He next sent a centurion to the Senate in Rome and demanded that they name him consul. The Senate was now outrightly hostile toward him. They agreed, but then changed their mind and attempted to take Octavian's mother hostage. A furious Octavian rushed to Rome with his army. On August 19th, 43 BCE, he rode into the city and immediately assumed control. One of his first actions was to tear up the amnesty that the Senate had issued to his uncle's killers. They were then condemned to death. Octavian then invited Mark Antony to return to Rome and rule with him and an old ally of his uncle by the name of Marcus Aemilius Lepidus in what was to be Rome's second triumvirate. The empire was divided between them, with Antony getting the east Lepidus, Africa, and Octavian, the West. A purge then followed, during which hundreds of wealthy and elite Romans, including Cicero, who had begun to speak against Octavian, were put to death. To cement his alliance with Mark Antony, Octavian married Antony's stepdaughter, Claudia. Then, on January the 1st, 42 BCE, he demanded that the Senate declare Julius Caesar a god. He was then able to call himself the son of a god, Four years later, his army proclaimed him Imperator, or Victorious General. Meanwhile, two of the leading assassins of Caesar, Brutus and Cassius, had fled to Greece and built up their power base. The combined armies of Octavian and Mark Antony met them twice in battle and defeated them, with both Brutus and Cassius committing suicide. Now a rift occurred, with Mark Antony accusing Octavian of cowardice during the battles. Antony then traveled to Egypt, where he formed an alliance with Queen Cleopatra VII. He went on to have an affair with Cleopatra, which produced two children. Back in Rome, the members of the Senate were worried that Mark Antony had fallen under the spell of the Egyptian queen. Convinced that Cleopatra was scheming to conquer Rome, Octavian was also growing increasingly incensed with Antony. In 40 BCE, he had handed his sister Octavia Minor over in marriage to Antony. He now considered Antony's very public affair with Cleopatra as a major disgrace to the family name. Octavian took the initiative and prepared to move his army against the combined forces of Antony and Cleopatra. On September the 2nd, 31 BCE, his forces, under the command of Marcus Agrippa, defeated them at the Battle of Actium. A year later, Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. Octavius was now the unchallenged ruler of the Roman Empire, yet he was careful not to make the same mistake that his uncle had by declaring himself dictator. He resigned his powers, only to be re-bestowed them by the Senate. It was then that they also gave him the title Augustus. The month of August was also named in his honor. In 19 BCE, Augustus was given supreme power over the entire Roman Empire with the title of Imperium Maius. The English word emperor is derived from that title. Under his rule, Rome flourished. He ushered in a period of peace that was known as the Pax Romana, providing the settled conditions under which the economy, agriculture, and arts could strengthen as never before. Under Augustus, an ambitious building project was undertaken in Rome. An inscription titled, The Deeds of the Divine August, states that he restored 82 temples in a 12-month period. Augustus also introduced a number of innovative social measures. These included outlawing adultery and imposing tax penalties for couples with no children. Unlike many rulers, he led by example. 
banishing his own daughter when she committed adultery. By the time of his death in 14 CE, at the age of 75, the senator declared Augustus to be a god. It is easy to understand why. He had single-handedly brought an end to more than a century of warfare and ushered in a 40-year period of peace, during which the majesty of ancient Rome had been restored and solidified. He left the Roman Empire a vast world power, stretching across Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. And he established a dynasty that would see 70 emperors follow in his wake. But none of them came close to matching the greatness of Augustus Caesar. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any other suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, please leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time on History Junkie.